Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the car. Today, we are going to take a question from Fabian, who writes in, I've been wondering, has there ever been a problem you encountered while working on Serenity OS that no matter how much you try to tackle it, you simply couldn't find a solution that worked? Whenever I watch your videos, it seems that while sometimes it takes you some time to implement certain features, you always have some sort of map in mind on how you're going to do it and you're really quick at coming up with solutions to new issues that pop up throughout the process. Is there anything you've given up on for the time being? Um, thank you, Fabian, for this question. That's a, that's a good question. So there isn't really anything I've given up on for the time being, um, but there's plenty of stuff I've given up on permanently because they were stupid ideas. Uh, because I have stupid ideas all the time, and I go and do sort of exploratory programming to try stuff out, and a lot of that ends up getting thrown away because it's stupid. Uh, and you don't see a lot of that in my videos, because when when it's time for me to make a video, I usually have a specific time frame um, available. So I have to come up with something that I can do in one hour or two hours. Um, and so when choosing what to make a video about or what, like what subject to hack on in a video, uh, I tend to pick stuff where I know I can finish this in one hour or two hours. Um, because you know, all the infrastructure I need is in place or most of it is in place and it just needs this little thing. And, um, this is probably a really useful skill somewhere uh, that I've acquired since I started uh, this YouTube channel. Uh, because when I started the channel, I, I wasn't able to do this. But but nowadays, I'm pretty dang good at like coming up with tasks and um, telling you like how long I can expect they will take. Um, some kind of manager's dream. But... Um, Anyway, uh, the, um, the thing that you, you mentioned, like, um, that I, it seems like I always have a plan in mind, it's not, it's not so much a plan, it's just that um, I, I pick a subject that I, I feel somewhat confident that I can finish, and then the plan, I just let the plan grow organically as I go, uh, and there's no magic to that and no tricks. And I know that to, um, you know, to, to a novice programmer watching me work, it might look like um, magic or something, but it's really all just experience. Like I've been doing this for such a long time. And uh, you mentioned that it seems like I'm very quick at coming up with uh, solutions to new issues that pop up. It's it's usually because I've I've seen these types of issues like thousands of times, and I've made stupid mistakes thousands of times. Uh, I've spent thousands of hours debugging dumb bugs that were caused by my own stupid mistakes. Thousands and thousands of these things. Um, and it's like I've been doing this my whole life. So um, this this thing that you see where where I feel kind of confident in my programming is just experience and um, there's no magic. I'm not um, special in this way. Like I, I really do believe that anybody who's who's truly interested and in, in, in love with programming can get to where I am skill wise and, and probably surpass me if they spend their time a little um, more wisely than I have. Um, and I would be very happy to see that. Um, and it's, I guess it's, it's important to me to, to tell people this, that, that what I do, there's no magic in what I do, right? Like, and, um, it's, it's just experience. And if you debug a thousand of your own stupid bugs, you'll develop the pattern recognition ability to, first you'll start to get really good at debugging the bugs, and eventually you get really good at uh, catching yourself even before you create the bugs. Um, and um, when you do that over a long period of time, you kind of build this confidence, and that confidence allows you to um, just like steamroll program things. Um, 
I, I don't know exactly how to describe it. It's it's almost like playing an instrument. Like at at some point, you just get um, so comfortable with the instrument that you don't think about you don't think about music theory or or, or these things. You're just kind of playing the music. I guess uh, that, that's that's kind of how I feel about programming, at least when I'm using um, language I'm comfortable with, like C++. Um, and it's it's a lovely thing. Like I, I wish for everybody to everybody who loves programming, I, I wish for you to um, to to get to that place where you experience programming that way as well. And I think really the the way to get there is just to be consistent and keep doing it. And maybe the one thing I would advise against is um, like technology hopping too much, like switching between different things instead of sticking with something and learning it. Um, now it doesn't. I don't think it matters really what you stick with. Just uh, stick with things for for more than just a short while, so that you can really soak them in. Um, and uh, and like I mean, that's not to say that you shouldn't try out stuff until you find the thing you really love. Like do that first, but then once you find the thing you really love, um, don't go cheating on it all the time. Um, Stick with the thing you love for a while and, and, you know, let it enter into some kind of symbiosis with it where it teaches you and you teach it, if that makes sense. I don't know. Anyway, I'm getting off track a little bit, but but I wanted to address that because it's something that people often ask me about. Like, um, like oh, how, how, how do I, um, how do I, like, program so efficiently or how do I... Um, how do I catch my bugs so quickly or how do I figure out my bugs without a debugger? Uh, it's it's almost all like pattern recognition built on years of experience. Like I, I know myself and the way I write code and um, I'm able to draw on that to recognize uh, good patterns and bad patterns. So um, I guess the... Um, the important thing is that that at least I believe that anybody can can learn to do this extremely well. You just have to do it a lot and consistently, and um, always always like challenge yourself to learn something new. Um, don't just like stay in the same comfort zone all the time, but always expand a little bit so that you find yourself um, creating new bugs and um, sticking your foot in new traps so that you have to learn what the new traps are. Um, anyway, um, the um, things I've abandoned, um, I guess I can give an example of, of something that I abandoned a while back, which was pretty stupid, but I still went down that road. And it was before I started the uh, user space emulator project the way that it is today uh, which is a CPU emulator that runs in user space and emulates um, serenity programs um, and the point of it is to have something like uh, Valgrind and serenity and that works pretty well now but before I started writing it as a CPU emulator I originally made a prototype of that um, using ptrace instead so it was implemented almost like a debugger where it would um, start a program, attach to it, and then f uh, find all of the instructions uh, by like scanning the whole program and then find all the instructions that did a memory access of some kind. And then it would insert a breakpoint there. And then um, when you would run the program, it would break whenever it wanted to do a memory access and our supervisor program would sort of... Um, instrument that memory access with ptrace calls and then like keep track of what was malloc memory and stuff like that and it was a kind of a ridiculous architecture but i just wanted to try it because i thought maybe this would be a lot easier than building a fully fledged cpu emulator um so i spent like two three hours building this thing and i got it to work but it was slow as all heck and um, 
and I was actually recording myself doing this, and I got so frustrated with myself that I started getting like visibly angry at at myself in the video, and I, I really didn't like that. That's why that's why I didn't post the video to my channel. Um, although now I kind of regret not having that video because maybe it was funny or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Um, but it was it was kind of a ridiculous architecture, and I just tried it because I was trying to like avoid the bigger task of building a whole emulator. But in the end, I, I think it took like like eight minutes to run uh, a simple echo program or something like that, like some some ridiculous uh, time. Um, because as it turns out, like instrumenting all memory accesses in a program using ptrace is not particularly fast. Um, anyway, so that was ended up being something that I didn't pursue. I threw it away. Um, and I just have a lot of things like that, like things that don't pan out. But for things that do pan out, they accumulate. And that's something that's really magical about the Serenity project is that um, we keep accumulating all these little things that, that pan out pretty well. And the system, the system is really cool. Like I, sometimes I just have to stop and look at it and think, and I always find myself thinking, wow, this is pretty neat. <laughs> um, just, um, it's like this this fun little thing that I do sometimes, which is just I just um, run the system in full screen mode, and then I just sit there and play around with stuff. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, it, it was one of the um, one of the things I was doing when the system was like a couple of months old, and I first got a GUI. Then I would just uh, bring it up into full screen and then just sit there and stare at it and dream about the future of like what can we do with this thing. Now that we're on the whole screen. And I still do that sometimes. I just bring it into full screen and stare at it. But now there are so many things to mess with um, when you're running it. So, anyways. Um, man, I guess I'm, <laughs> I'm in such a good mood. Um, good, good moods lately. Anyways. Um, I hope that answers the question, Fabian. Um, thank you for asking it. It's uh, it's it's important to build things. It's important to me to build things and throw them away because it's part of my creative process. Uh, and maybe that's something I should show more of on the channel, because I realize now that I barely show any of that. Like. I've had maybe one or two videos where I build something and just throw it away. Um, and it's something I do a lot of, so it might be interesting. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll make some videos like that. Anyway, um, that's, that's the video today. So <laughs> thank you for hanging out with me in the car. And if you have any questions, just uh, drop a comment. Um, and I'll see you next time.